One, two, three, four. Now I find my place in the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth commandeth the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and that they are wrought in God. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Spirit, for the Scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And how just wait and how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good news. Here to tell you people today that God is love. And God loved you very much that he came down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to Calvary's cross, that the gospel, that Christ died for our sins. Christ was buried according to the scriptures, and again he rose again the third day, all according to scripture. You say, why, why was this all happened? Why is there a story about Jesus Christ? Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The wages of sin is death. I'm here to tell you about a disease that you have. It's called terminal disease. It's called death. And the reason why you will die is because you are a sinner. And Jesus Christ came down to pay for, to give you the remedy of sin. And that payment was his sinless blood, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Sin is not very popular. We give it cute little names. But sin is sin to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him it is sin. A foolish thought in the Bible says it is sin. The big ten commandments are full of sins, of lying, adultery, killing, stealing. For God came to pay for your debt that you cannot pay, lest any man should boast. Salvation is wrought in only but Jesus Christ. For what must I do to be saved? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. He said, what if I don't do what God tells me to do? What if I do not receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? What happens to me then? Then God will point wrath upon you, and that wrath of God is hell. That wrath of God is the lake of fire. And Revelation chapter 20 Revelation chapter 20, and 
and death in hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Your life without Jesus Christ ends in damnation. John chapter 3 says you are already condemned. People, the Bible says in Isaiah 58, plus, 58 verse 1, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. I speak loud by the commandment of God to wicked all you souls. I speak out loud that you may hear the word of God. I come here in the love of God and the love of your soul to warn you. To tell you the judgment is coming. Prepare to meet thy God. For the Lord Jesus Christ is coming and he will not be that baby in the manger. He'll be the lion, the tribe of Judah with the sword out of his mouth to cast wrath upon all that have rejected what he has done for you. Yet, but the love of God is, for God so loved the world. God is reaching out today to you, if you know it or not, by people like me, to explain to you what the gospel is. That there is hope. There is eternal life. There is a vacancy in heaven waiting for you, for you to have your name written down the last book of life, written by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, shed upon Calvary about 2,000 years ago. The precious blood of God. And Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, and that blood, according to Acts chapter 20, verse 28, is God's blood. Shed upon the streets and upon the palace of uh, Pilate, upon the streets of Jerusalem, upon that wooden cross on Calvary's hill, that you may have life, and have life more abundantly. Listen, I don't speak loud of anger. I speak loud for so you can hear what Jesus has done for you. I speak loud that you may get loud and clear from what the Bible I speak. I speak loud because the Bible commands. Go eat all the world and preach the gospel. But see, a lot of you pantyways out there are under a nitwit, pantyways preacher who has daisies growing out of his beer drums. And you listen to these kind of idiot preachers on the radio, on the TV, for God is love, and just give your money to me, and, and prosperity will happen, and the Greek says this, and the Greek says that, and blah, 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 blah. I tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says you are wicked and condemned without Jesus. And America's not ready for preachers like us, but you find out in the history of America, there was hellfire Bible something preaching upon the streets of America that got people right to turn their alcohol places closed. Billy Sunday, Bob Jones. And we stand all here in the, merit of the history of still preaching Jesus Christ and the blood atonement shed upon Calvary's cross that you may be saved. We stand to tell you that one day you will face God in a judgment. I will tell you one or two of the judgments. The judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ are for those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then the second judgment is the great white throne judgment. And for those that are living today, that judgment will bring you into the lake of fire. Because now is the time to have your name written down in the last book of life. Written by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, God.
God so loved the world. God has set His eyes upon you, His creation. Yes, I say God created you. You didn't come from a big bang. You are not of monkeys. God made them separate. You are a created being made by the Holy God in heaven. <coughs> and as a created being made by God, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, He has compassion upon you. He's reaching out to you. He's tapping you on the shoulder and saying, Listen, don't listen to that man. Listen to the Word. See that he has the book open. See that he holds the words of life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. True love is giving. True love is sacrifice. Satan's love is what can I get from you? Satan's love would say, come on baby, if you really love me, let's get in the back seat. That's Satan's love. But the Bible says God is love, and the true love of the Bible is sacrificial, that God loved you, that he gave up something. What he gave up was his only begotten son. God gave up himself. God gave himself. What other religious leader has given up? What other religion has sacrificed? Oh, I know there's a religion out there that takes sacrifices, but what religion has offered, has sacrificed of themselves? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. The Bible reaches out a plain, pure salvation for you to believe on. If any of these vendors here with their fruits and vegetables have a product that is bruised, that is old, that is rotting, that is no good, he will cast that into the garbage and get rid of it. And yet, in your sinful condition, without being washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will perish like old produce. And God will cast you out until the eternal flames of hell for all eternity because of your condition. There are certain medical conditions that people get that you got to isolate them from the rest of the population, including leprosy, including AIDS. And if you are in your sinful condition, in your sinful state, God will cast you out from His presence and from those that are saved because you're no good. But the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. Everlasting life is by the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus of Christ alone, for He says, I am the way. This is Jesus speaking. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't get to the Father in heaven by what you are and who you are and what you can do. That's not what the Bible says. It's not who you know. It's who has died for you. 
It's not what you can do. It's what Jesus has already done for you. See, the tickets of heaven have been paid for, have been printed upon Calvary's cross in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you're asked that day by God, why should I enter you into my holy gates? The only answer he will receive is your son's sacrifice. Your son died for me upon the cross. Your son, and only by your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, can I gain access. Any other answer is void. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. God is not willing that any should perish. God is long-suffering. You are living and breathing today because God is giving the opportunity to hear that loud mouth preach the Bible. You are walking and talking with two ears to listen to the Bible being preached very loud. And the reason why he does it loud is so you can hear. Because cars will get in the way, birds will get in the way, radios will get in the way, motorcycles are always getting in the way. Talking and making deals with the watermelons gets in the way. That guy's got to be loud so everything that gets in the way can get into your ears to hear the gospel. God has given me a set of lungs not to be angry but to be loud so you can hear. No, my mom did not ever appreciate having a loud son, but God does. And you don't. But if you were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved, you say, glory to God, that guy's got lungs for Jesus. But you stand on the wrong side of God today. And yet God says, no matter how much you hate that guy, how much you hate that message, I am still reaching out to you to get right and do right. God is not going to condemn you because you just outright reject. He's still long-suffering. He's still reaching out. But one day that door will close. And I don't know when that door will ever be for you. Death may come today for some of you. The rapture may happen as I'm preaching right now. God may put you on the shelf and say, I'm all done with you this afternoon. But right now, while you're listening, the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for you. He was buried in a tomb that wasn't even his. And he could, the only person could put a sign outside that tomb and say, For sale, used once. For the scriptures proclaim that on the third day he arose again. That is the victory over religions. There are religions that are buried in the ground and are still buried. Yet Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father today, alive and well, saying, keep telling those people about me. Listen, they hated Jesus too. You know what they did for Jesus? They gave him a cross because he preached like we preach. What would Jesus do? He continued preaching. He continued to reach out to you. But God is long-suffering right now that you may come in your sinful condition to repent and get right before the Holy God. Jesus Christ did not come to send fire, lightning, hail, he came for life. But that's not going to happen the next time he comes back. 
the next time he comes back, fire, anger, wrath, and hell. Because you have chosen of your own merit to reject his offering. But the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There is hope right now of you being saved. Say, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believing that he arose from the dead. Listen, people, you have watched TV programs and movies about these flesh-eating creatures that come out of the dead. Why can't you believe in God doing it? And God doesn't come looking for brains. He comes looking for you, who is dead and a walking zombie. And we're not looking for brains, looking for hamburgers, hot dogs, watermelons, and peas, and everything else you can find. Because you are a walking dead. You're going to die. And Christ came that you may have life. You're the horror story. And without Jesus Christ, the horror is, is where you're going to end up one day, and you can't change it. It can be changed now. Now is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. You may not have a now tomorrow. Because tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow is always tomorrow unless you wake up dead. He said, wait a minute. You said wake up dead. You don't wake up dead. You want to talk to the, to the rich guy in hell in, in the Gospel of Luke? He woke up dead in hell. In torments. You will wake up dead one day. And you will face the Lord Jesus Christ who died and loved you enough that died and was buried and rose from the grave and that you had believed in Him and glory to God in honor for all. Or you'll wake up one day dead in the lake of fire burning for all eternity. God's not willing to any perish. That is the long suffering of our God and Savior. But time will be he'll have enough. When is that time? I'll tell you exactly when that time is. I don't know. And anybody tells you that they do know, classify them as a liar. He that believeth on him is not condemned. There is no condemnation. There is no damnation. There is no hell to those that have believed on Jesus Christ. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Believe in a religion, you'll be condemned. Believe in your money, you'll be condemned. Believe on what you can do, you'll be condemned. But believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your blessed hope, there is, according to John chapter 3, no condemnation. You are safe and secure in Christ. You're not in His palm. You are His palm. You're not going to heaven if you're saved. You are always seated in heavenly 